Welcome into the Sports Memo Betting Podcast for February 4 Super Bowl recap. What a good Monday morning it is for all the Pats betters out there, for all the unders betters out there in the Super Bowl. And we got Teddy Covers with us. Teddy, what a great morning it is. Super Bowl, uh, post Super Bowl <laughs> Monday. Welcome into the podcast. How are you? How are you, Drew? I'm, uh, I, I, can, I can hear it from your voice that you had New England yesterday. Did you have some under as well? Uh, Actually, I didn't. Even though that that was definitely the right the 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 the, 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 the rightest call, if you will, on the under. No, I did have the Pats, man. So uh, I, it, it is a happy Monday morning for me. That makes one of us. Of course, I had uh, I had a taste of uh, L.A. yesterday in my pocket. Uh, even with a good number, it didn't matter. In, in the end, the Rams were pretty god awful offensively in that ball game. Uh, and there's not a, a lot of ways to sugarcoat it. You know, uh, it's not like New England. New England, by the way, becomes the uh, first team to win a Super Bowl with less than two touchdowns of offense. They've done that now twice, uh, <laughs> which I guess we give Belichick credit for. Uh, but uh, more than anything else, I thought the, the prevailing theme of the game yesterday was the Rams' ineptness. Uh, I mean, what was your t- Defensively, Wade Phillips <laughs> put together a heck of a game plan, but uh, offensively, you had a quarterback with the jitters and a running back who was hurt, and that duo couldn't do a whole lot. For LA, start to finish, uh, Goff was pretty miserable, <laughs> and uh, Gurley, you know, the Gurley Anderson duo uh, wasn't able to keep the uh, pass off balance uh, at all. Combining what uh, seventeen carries for fifty seven yards, that wasn't enough, obviously, uh, to keep the Patriots' pass rush from getting in Jared Goff's face. Four sacks uh, for New England. It was the pressure more than the sacks that got to Goff, and Goff got happy feet in his arm. You know, he was bad. I mean, how else do we? Uh, how else do you describe it? You know, the the quarterback for the losing team was bad, and Brady's going to get credit for being good. You know, uh, and the game started. Drew starts with Patriot turnover and Goskowski missed field goal. You can't ask for anything more than that. Uh, uh, if you're an LA, uh, an LA backer, you know it didn't feel like New England's day right from the get go. But the Rams couldn't do anything with their chances. Uh, they didn't get a whole lot of chances, really. I uh, thought the it, it was Goff more than anything. Goff wasn't good. And you don't win a whole lot of Super Bowls with uh, your quarterback playing at a bottom yeah. tier level. No, no, and you bring up a good point. I mean, he went 19 for 38, 229 yards, had the interception, compared to Tom Brady, you know, 21 for 35, 262 yards. He also had that uh, tip pick there in the beginning, which you just touched on. And, Teddy, you know, my overall take is – I, I think just coaching-wise, I think Belichick won the coaching battle. And, uh, you know, Brady stood tough. He's uh, been there before. And I think it showed from the quarterback position. Also, something that I don't think is getting talked about enough and enough credit due is that Patriots' defensive front got after it. They got after the Rams. Um, and, and you could just tell they were pushing them around a little up bit, a little bit up front on both sides of the ball. And I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. The, the, the Patriots defense, what, by a lot of rankings, pretty much middle of the pack. Hell, even some people had them less than middle of the pack. And it, it, especially down the stretch, that defense improved. And it wasn't the same defense as in the beginning of the season. In the playoffs, I, they, they had some tough, some tough runs there against some really good quarterbacks. But other than that, I mean, they, they came to play in the Super Bowl. They got after Goff. And it, it really comes down to, you know, the coaching and the quarterback in the NFL are the two most important things and as the combination. And it showed. And, Teddy, it's not like the Pats were, you know, the absolute right side. Heck, I, I would say most people in the industry were on the Rams. It was the quote-unquote smart side. The uh, power rating side had the Rams ahead, but I, I just don't think it factored in the extra preparation time. It's the Super Bowl, that big of game, and the the, the coaching quarterback, um, w- w- what's the right word? I mean, just been there before, done it before. How do you equate for that? And that's what I think it came down to. I don't know. Do you dis- disagree? Well, certainly, you know, when you and I were discussing the Super Bowl before the game, and I'm like, here's the case for the Patriots, Belichick and Brady. That's yeah. what it was. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't anything. Was, the defensive game plan was certainly brilliant. But New England did what they've been doing for the last 20 years, which is force opponents into mistakes. Look, if Goff has a good game, the Rams win. All right, now. Goff didn't have a good game. A lot of that was new, certainly New England's pressure. Some of that was Goff. <laughs> you know, uh, more than some of it was Goff. You know, Goff, uh, Goff had Cooks open in the end zone twice. 
both times uh, misconnections. You know, one 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 of the two uh, ended up, uh, yeah, once earlier and once later uh, when they were down three nothing, and then when they were down uh, ten to three, uh, they, they had cooked, and obviously the third time. Uh, that he threw the jump ball to Cooks. It got intercepted in the red zone, and that was pretty much the end of it uh, for L.A. But Goff had receivers that were open that he could have made plays to. Now, Cook didn't come down with the one contested pass, uh, obviously, that would have tied the game. Uh, but even more than that, I don't think that it, if, I'm, if I'm pointing fingers, you know, the fingers go towards the quarterback. The quarterback wasn't ready. Uh, and... We're going to give Belichick credit for that. Obviously, the defensive game plan for L.A., uh, for New England, gave the, uh, the Rams fits the start to finish. McVay's taking heat here. I don't know that I, you know, I, I didn't love his punt. Uh, I didn't love the play call uh, early on when they were, was it third and three at the Pats 42, was it? And then they go incomplete pass punt. Uh, I was, you know, I, I wasn't thrilled with that, but... I, McVay designed enough plays to get Rams receivers open downfield. Uh, there were a good handful of them. Goff just couldn't get the ball into their hands. Yeah, and, and, and Teddy, I mean, you bring up the the, the, the contested pass in the back of the end zone there. Um, Goff was late on that pass. I don't know if you noticed, though, that that ball was fluttering, and there yeah. was multiple other passes from both Goff and especially Tom Brady early where that ball was fluttering a little bit. I don't know if you have any insight on this, but I know from playing the quarterback position in high school, if the ball is slick and they're not changing it out, it, it can really affect the quarterback. And I know they have a special ball for the for the Super Bowl. Do you think there's anything there to take forward in, in, in future Super Bowls as far as that special ball maybe not being right for the quarterback? Not necessarily. Uh, it's not anything that I'm going to look at and say, oh, you know, because Goff threw some fluttery balls. I mean, you know, Brady. <laughs> Brady threw some fluttery balls there in the beginning. I know. Too. Brady wasn't good. You know, <laughs> uh, Brady wasn't very good. Um, he certainly wasn't good enough uh, to win a Super Bowl in which the opponent put points on the board. But obviously, in this case, the Rams uh, couldn't do that. And so let's go through some of the props. First quarter line, obviously, nothing, nothing. The, will there be a scoreless quarter cashed uh, by the end of one? Uh, Ram, uh, the Patriots win the second quarter 3 nothing. Rams win the third quarter 3 nothing. Patriots win the fourth quarter 3 nothing. Every quarter goes under the total If you were betting quarters uh, You know, Patriots team total Was, was 29 and a half or 30 That stayed under Rams team total 28 That stayed under Team to score first, New England wins Team to score last, New England wins Team to score first, wins the game Minus 170, that was good First team to kick off, the Rams. I mean, <laughs> uh, not much drama there. Uh, came out of the coin flip. Will there be a score in the final two minutes of the first half? No. Will there be the score in the first five and a half, six, or six and a half minutes of the game? No. Will either team score three uh, unanswered times? No. Will there be a successful two-point conversion? No. Will there be a two-point conversion try? No. Will there be a safety? No. Will there be a defensive or special teams and touchdown? No. Will the game go into overtime? No. Will there be a score in the final two minutes of the second half? Finally, we get a yes. The Patriots kicking uh, the game clinching field goal. First score of the game, field goal safety. That was plus 170. Uh, open 175, close plus 150. Uh, that was a winner. Team to score last in the first half, Patriots. Team to score more field goals, Patriots. Longest made field goal of the game goes over. Barely. <laughs> but it got there. Total number of punts from both teams flew over the total. Uh, I like the under a little bit there. That obviously wasn't the case, uh, despite the fact that neither team played with pace. Total lost fumbles by both teams under cash with ease. Total quarterback sacks by both teams. A combined uh, five goes over the total. Total number of made field goals by both teams, two and a half, stays under, thanks to uh, Zerline's miss uh, at the end. Uh, total completions by the Patriots under 26 and a half. Total completions by the Rams under 24 and a half. Over under two and a half players to get a pass attempt under. Nobody but the quarterbacks uh, got a throw. Total passing yards by Brady 294 and a half. Anywhere from 300 to 302 and a half. Uh, the undercast either way. Uh, Brady touchdown passes goes under one and a half. Brady does throw an interception. Uh, that cashes. Goff's passing yard go under the 285 and a half open, 289 and a half close. That stays under. Goff touchdown passes stay under, obviously. The Rams didn't get in the end zone. Will Goff throw at least one interception? Yes. 
Over under uh, over under one and a half interceptions for the game. Over uh, rushing attempts by Sony Michelle goes over seventeen and a half. Rushing yards by Sony Michelle goes over anywhere from seventy six and a half to seventy nine and a half. Rushing attempts by James White under three and a half. Rushing yards by James White under seventeen and a half. Rushing attempts by Todd Gurley stays under. Uh, rushing yards by Todd Gurley stays under. Rushing attempts by C.J. Anderson stays under. Rushing yards by C.J. Anderson stays under. Edelman goes over with both receptions uh, and yards. Hogan for the Patriots stays under in both receptions and yards. Philip Dorsett stays under in receptions and yards. Gronkowski goes over receptions and yards. James White goes under both receptions and yards. Uh, total points by Goskowski under eight and a half. Brandon Cooks goes over receptions and yards. Robert Wood stays under receptions, goes over with his yards total. The only guy that I saw all day that did, did that. Everyone else, if they were under receptions, they were under yards. Uh, Woods, uh, the one guy who didn't get over five and a half, but still eclipsed his yardage number. Josh Reynolds stays under his yardage number. Tyler Higby stays under his receptions number and yards number. Gurley doesn't catch passes, and he stays under or receiving yards. Zerline stays under his points. A good day for under betters. No question. Doesn't matter what you were betting under. Number of different Patriots to have a rec- rushing attempt over five and a half catches. Patriots to have a reception seven and a half. That stays under. Number of different Rams to have a rushing attempt five. That stays under. Rams to have a pass reception six and a half. That stays under. Player to score the first touchdown, Sony Michelle. Player to score the last touchdown, Sony Michelle. Player to score the only touchdown, Sony Michelle. Whew, I'm out of breath. That's a little prop recap for you. Yeah, no, no. Thanks for running that down, Teddy. And guys, uh, it, you know, listening out there, it's Teddy Covers. Follow him on Twitter at Teddy underscore Covers. This is the uh, Super Bowl recap podcast. And also, it's nine dollar Monday, February fourth, the day after the Super Bowl. Happy Monday to you out there. Every play on Sports Memo. Dot com is discounted to just nine dollars. If you're interested in any uh, longer term packages, Teddy has his seven day all access. You can get a uh, thirty day, ninety day, one year all access. All there at sportsmemo.com. Easy, just easy checkout. Anything like that. But his seven day all access. We're running a uh, podcast special here. Teddy seven at checkout. That's T E D D Y seven at checkout. We'll give it to you for half off. So that's uh, what less than sixty bucks, less than uh, ten dollars a day there for his weekly service. Seven day all access coupon code Teddy seven at checkout. Um, Teddy, the, the the props that you brought up, uh, Edelman one um, receptions yards over MVP. I believe it was uh, what. Uh, 200, uh, I don't know, big, big number. It was, there. The, it was the range I saw 18s to 1, to 20 to 1, 22 to 1. Uh, that was the range Edelman was in. Uh, okay, 22 20. to 1. Obviously, yeah, a, And I thought it was a clear choice uh, for MVP. Uh, I thought that there was a chance they might give it to Brady uh, just because it's Brady. And once Grock started getting, you know, uh, involved in the offense down the stretch a little bit more, I thought maybe they'd give it to Brady. But Edelman is just too much. You know, 10 catches, 141 yards. Uh, and certainly the at times in the game, he was the difference maker, certainly on third downs. Even though the Patriots weren't very good on third downs, when they were converting on third downs, it seemed to be Edelman getting the job done uh, when they did that. Yeah, I think two things um, on the game. One, I, I don't think the Rams uh, kind of you know changed their plans a little bit for what the Pats were doing with Edelman. That surprised me defensively. Also, offensively, I want to get your opinion. You think, uh, uh, how injured was Gurley, in your opinion? Well, let's talk about what the Rams did defensively because, I mean, come on. They held the Patriots to 13 points. Uh, Wade Phillips, I thought, put together a masterful game plan. And if you tell me before the game the Patriots scored 13 points, I'm going to, you know, (laughs) be very, very happy to put my money uh, on the Rams knowing that prior to kickoff. So uh, if you're saying what's wrong with L.A., you can only point the finger at Goff uh, and, and the offense. And we talk about Gurley. I mean, you know, Gurley was in the game and involved in the game plan as a part of a two-headed running back monster. You know, he was clearly, you know, his, he had a couple of, he had the one 16-yard carry, he had another carry that got that I thought was a key point in the game where the Rams were really finding, for the first time, a little bit of rhythm offensively, and they called that, uh, you know, the, the, the flags went the Patriots' way again. I'll just put it that way. Uh, nine flags for L.A., only three for New England. And I thought that was a key flag 
on a very dicey holding penalty that snapped. I thought it was, that was Gurley's best run of the day. And I thought it snapped the momentum of that balanced offense that the Rams uh, had for a drive or two. Um, what's his future with the L.A.? Look, you know, you can't pay a guy that kind of money and give him, you know, 10 carries for 35 yards and one reception. So uh, either it was an injury issue or they're going to cut him. Um, which of the two is, is the case? I, I couldn't tell you, but, uh, you know, you, you, don't, you don't pay that, you know, the franchise money for a running back and then, and then put the guy on the sidelines. It's a... Uh, you know, there were a number of things McVay has done in the postseason that were a little bit of head scratchers. Um, Gurley's usage rate, certainly one of them. Teddy, um, also a couple props uh, only offshore, not attributed to a box score. Giselle shown over one and a half times that hit. Also, Giselle yep. no cleavage, which uh, she never has cleavage. That yeah, one that hit. was a given. I, I was amazed that the public was betting that one the other way around. But there's controversy over uh, over at least one of the national anthem was controversial because it is about what what is the right time of that? What you sing Brave twice or something? It was uh, I was trying to track it on my phone. I'm like, when did the national anthem start and when did it end? <laughs> this is going to be tough to grade. That's why you don't have props like that in Vegas. That's why those props are only offshore. The color of the Gatorade prop, that kind of thing. Hey, and I, I botched the tweet on that. By the way, I'm like, I, th- I thought that was clear. And then I tweeted, uh, and then I saw, I checked somebody else. They're like, "Oh, it's all clear." And then I got 15 tweets in about two seconds. No, dude, that was blue. Uh, but issues like that are why you only see those props offshore. The props that you see in Las Vegas are props that can be graded from a box score. That there is some official record of what the actual results of those plays were. Whereas the, you know, what color will the Gatorade be, and how long is the national anthem going to be? You don't find those in box scores there's no official record and now you're dealing with the book and some books are generous some books not so much uh when it came to grading that uh, national anthem prop uh were there other ones that you were talking about uh drew i, I think i cut you off there no no it's fine it, it, yeah a couple things on the national anthem prop uh, a lot of the offshore books i saw anyway they did specify you know the end of the first brave in because they, they were already planning for that so i, I believe it was Darren Rebell or somebody threw out a tweet about you know huge, huge controversy. I, I think it is a little bit overblown just because they, they were already preparing for that. Um, maybe there was a, a, a shop or two that that did have a problem. I, I, I do know uh, Bet Online did pay out both sides, but I feel that you know that, that, that that's a, that's a marketing piece as well. Um, I, I, I I wanted to just touch on. I, I didn't realize like the the, the Giselle over prop. It, it's correlated with the Patriots because I, I I did have the Pats and I did have the Giselle shown over one and a half. And when the Pats scored the touchdown, that's when she was shown twice in a row. So it was like a yep. good it was like a good ninety second piece there for me, Teddy. Sure, sure, it went bang bang. I know. I'm like, yeah, hey, and I'm like, oh, she's like, no cleavage. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So that was a good. That's one. what but, I'm going to notice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was minus five hundred, and uh, yeah, that, it was just uh, it needed to be priced more. It's because social function. She she never really does. But uh, Teddy, I, I mean, anything else? Uh, I guess we're what at twenty minutes now. Just Super Bowl recap. You want to throw out there for the Super Bowl? Um, I hope everyone. I mean, look, it's <laughs> it is legitimately a betting holiday, and that's what you love about the Super Bowl. It's it's the one day of the year that everybody bets, and you can go nuts a little bit. Hopefully, you wake up on Monday morning, you still have a little bit of money left in your bankroll. If you did well, you got a big bankroll today. But hopefully, uh, you were betting. You know what's expected bet with your head, not over it. Hopefully, you did that this weekend, and you're in good position, regardless of what happened yesterday. Uh, to continue <laughs> this endeavor. Uh, obviously, uh, football is the rearview mirror now. You know, we, we, we'll, we'll start talking football and we'll start doing NFL previews, you know, July and August, I'm sure. Uh, but the reality is that now it's basketball season. You know, baseball is on the horizon. Uh, you know, NBA and college hoops take center stage. So uh, if you do this type of stuff on a daily basis, you know, it's time to turn the page. You do your season ending record keeping and move on to the next <laughs> opportunity that's in front of us. Hopefully we'll be able to guide you in the right direction in the weeks and months to come, betting basketball and baseball before football season rolls around next fall. Well said, Teddy. And, uh, guys, Teddy has his 
City Sizzler up in the NBA. Normally 20 bucks discounted to just $9 for $9 Monday. All plays on sportsmemo.com are discounted to just $9. Teddy touched on the fact it's NBA college basketball. It's a great time to be a sports better. I mean, right now in the basketball betting market, it's a great time to be a better. And Teddy's seven-day all-access pass, uh, half off with the coupon code TEDDY7 at checkout. Uh, Teddy, I guess um, we can just wrap it up. Any quick thoughts here on futures for next season? I was uh, possibly thinking about the Falcons, possibly thinking about uh, the Panthers there in 30-1 to 1 range. Um, not, that, not that futures are the best bet, but a- anything just off the top of your head, you think there's uh, any value in the uh, futures betting markets in the NFL? At this stage of the campaign, I wouldn't even consider a future bet. You know, the time to start looking at future bets is as we get into free agency, not draft, free agency, um, because free agency is going to give you a, a good idea about which teams are making a move in 2019 to win the title, and which teams are a little bit, uh, you know, are, are you understand what I'm saying? Like the Rams went yeah. all in in free agency, the Saints went all in free agency. You can tell very clearly those are two teams that are going for it in 2018. Neither won the title, but. A future on the Rams or the Saints following free agency last year would have been the best of the numbers you could have gotten for either team. So similarly, when we talk about the future markets here, start paying attention to the early parts of free agency. Which teams are making big moves for now? Those are teams whose odds are going to drop. You probably want to bet sooner rather than later in the future markets. But again, there isn't much you're going to see now in the future markets that you're not going to be able to find six months from now. So personally, when I say I never make a future bet, in the NFL in February. I mean, I never make a future bet in the NFL in February or March. Um, There's no reason to. The markets aren't moving. All right, Teddy. Well said. Great insight, as always. Guys, $9 Monday at sportsmemo.com. Check out Teddy's Sin City Sizzler. Normally 20 bucks, discounted to just 9 bucks. Happy Monday, $9 Monday at Sports Memo. Thanks for tuning in. Best of luck with your bets. We'll be back tomorrow talking basketball betting. <laughs>